Mm -hmm. Challenges do you see, uh, a couple of examples, when doing business for good that we need to focus on? So um, I would say that the challenges are really grappling with the um, a, a few things. You know, we operate within an, a, a, both an economic and a, and a business system and structure that at times incentivizes um, shareholder value really over uh, a sense of stakeholder responsibility uh, more broadly. And so one challenge is, and, 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 and that's not to say that all businesses see their role that way, but um, it certainly is just a, a fundamental assumption. You know, I, one of the things I'll say in class is, you know, we have an expression that goes, well, I had to make a business decision. Right. And, and that means I needed to prioritize numbers over human beings. Right. And I should say parenthetically, like you, Andrea, I'm a clinical uh, assistant professor. Uh, I, I'm a former healthcare executive and marketing executive. I'm a business person. Um, so I, I, yeah, I understand this and have lived this and, and, and understand the struggles inherent in this. But there is that expression, you know, I needed to make a business decision that really says at the end of the day, it's really all about money, uh, ultimately. And that kind of mental model, if you will, that's a challenge because that kind of becomes a starting point. And so, so one big challenge is just asking the big question, is that really what business is for? And in, 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 in especially for our students in understanding their professional careers moving forward, um, I'm, I'm toward the end of mine, one might, uh, you know, you can see, but students are at the beginning of theirs. And so um, can business not be a, a force for good? Um, and really help solve some of the most pressing of human and environmental challenges that we have. It's of course not. So, um, so I so that's one challenge is kind of that that mental model. Another one is that students really have a deep thirst of really wanting to know how does this show up in business. So um, the Institute for Business Ethics and Sustainability, for example, has an annual business as a force for good uh, ethics. Uh, symposium uh, in, a, in a month um, in October of uh, 2021, symposium will be on sustainability and supply chain. And we're going to bring together business cases and in, in both um, procurement and sustainability executives to really talk about how they pursue this within their organizations, within their supply chain, and within the complexity of their business um, demands. Um, because Students need to take great ideas and translate them into practical action and really see how organizations are doing that. That's really one of the great things of the business for good class because students build business plans. And then um, of course, how they see organizations doing that within, their own organ within those organizations is something that we seek to highlight. So that'd be another challenge. How does it show up? Um, and then I'd say the third challenge um, is that um, sometimes the way in which business is responding to these profound needs just doesn't seem adequate to the urgency. Right. And, and so students sometimes look at that and go, we're just not doing enough fast enough. If, if you look at the reporting around uh, climate change and the issue of global warming and then various net zero initiatives and are those robust enough and are they being embraced with an urgency that meets really the critical juncture that we are living in? Um, there's some gaps there. If you look at the sustainable development goals and you look at the UN's reporting on performance against the sustainable development goals, we're not closing the gap. And so that's, that's a challenge. And, um, and, and for students, sometimes they can get kind of concerned about that gap. So I'd say those are three broad challenges. And any recommendation how we can overcome those challenges? You mentioned the mindset and some of these really important challenges to address. Yeah, I think, um, and I think COVID has actually given us a really profound um, insight into this. There's an, uh, there's an idea, we use a program in, in, uh, in, certainly in the classes I teach, I use a program called Aim to Flourish 
which uh, essentially is a project asking students to go out and find businesses that are doing good and um, really contributing to the sustainable development goals and then tell the story of that. And one theory at the root of that program is an idea called quantum leadership. And this was developed by Chris Laszlo and a, and a, 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 a business leader, uh, Frederick Sow. And they have this idea called quantum leadership that says that really what, what business leaders need to do is to be committed to personal practices that really, and, and, and they think of things like mindfulness, different kind of reflective practices that really help people and business people really understand how profoundly connected we all are. Uh, in, in, in the world of sustainability, we say we, we, we live in integrated nested systems. We, we are profoundly interconnected. COVID has taught us that it's just us epidemiologically, uh, globally, um, we're, it, we're just profoundly interconnected. So, so this, um, this practice of quantum leadership says that if, if there can be individual practices of personal development that really help people feel connected and recognize how they're connected, then they're really motivated to close these gaps. And so, um, so that's, that's one piece that I, I would call out. And I think we, we, we work through the College of Business Administration and through IBES really to provide environments where people can have that experience too.